Hey quilters, it's Patty Carey of Patty's Patchwork. Thank you for joining the With Glowing Hearts Quilt Along event, celebrating the 10th anniversary of Northcott's iconic Stonehenge O Canada collection. I'm so glad you're here. Together, we're going to make this stunning Quilts of Valor size quilt. This month, we're working on block two. Here's what you need to get started. Along with the C6 pieces we cut for month one, we're also going to need fabrics F, G and H. Cut all of the pieces and label them as indicated. We're going to take our G1 pieces and our H3 squares. I've drawn a line on H3. We're making four at a time, no waste flying geese. We lay two squares in opposite corners of our G1 and we stitch a quarter of an inch each side of the line. I like to place the upper square on top of the lower square so that it doesn't get caught when I sew over the seam the first time. We stitch a quarter of an inch each side of that drawn line and then we cut along the line and we'll press our seam toward H3. Then I take the remaining squares of H3 and place them in the remaining corners of G1. I'm going to stitch a quarter of an inch each side of the line. My stitching line will be at the V created by the two H patches. We're going to chain piece down the first side of the line on both of our units. Then we flip it around and we chain piece back down the other side of the line to complete our four flying geese units. We cut along the line and we'll finger press our seams toward fabric H. Trim the tips if you wish as you go. Now we build our center block with our F2 piece and our G4 squares. And we're going to chain piece them in columns. So I'm sewing the second unit in row one to the first piece in row one. Then the second piece in row two to the first unit in row two. Then the second unit in row three to the first piece in row three. I'm going to finger press towards F2 and the corner squares. And then I'm going to add the third column. I'm going to pin my pieces in place so that everything stays correctly aligned. I keep my patches aligned at top and bottom edges as I add the third piece in row three, in row one to the second piece in row one, then the third unit in row two to the second unit in row two, then the third piece in row three to the second unit in row three. I finger press my seams towards the corner and towards F2. Now I can sew the rows together. I nest the seams at the intersections of the corner squares and the F2 center square. You can actually feel if the seams are nested or not. You can feel a space in there if they're not nested. Now I sew row two to row three. And our center block is done. I'm going to finger press my seams toward the center F2. Now we'll work on our corner units. We're going to make two at a time half square triangles with the G2 and C6 pieces. I've drawn lines on my G2 squares and I'm going to chain piece all four of these pieces down the first side of the line on all four. Then I flip it around and I chain piece down the other side of my drawn line. I cut along the line and I finger press my seams toward C6. Trim the tips if you wish. Now we build our corner units as four patches. I'm going to sew the second column to the first column. So I'm adding the second unit in row one to the first piece in row one keeping the patches aligned at top and bottom edges. Then I add the second unit in row two to the 
first piece in row two. I'm going to do this with all four corner units, sewing them together in these pairs. It makes it much more efficient when I sew the rows together. So my units are already intact the way that they should be. I cut them apart in pairs, which are the units themselves, and I'm going to finger press my seams towards F3 and G4. Now I just need to sew row one to row two, nesting the seams at the center and keeping the top and bottom edges aligned. Chain piece my rows together for all four units. Making sure those seams don't get flipped back. And there we have our corner units. We're going to make another set of four at a time, no waste flying geese, this time with G1 and C6. We have four of these to make, so we're gonna stitch a quarter of an inch each side of the drawn lines, then press the seams towards fabric C and add the remaining C6 squares, making sure our sewing line is at the V created by the C patches. Stitch a quarter of an inch each side of that line and we cut them apart. Now we can do our flying geese sections. We're going to add our F1 pieces to the flying geese. I keep my flying geese unit on top so I can control the seam and my F1 triangle extends 3 8 of an inch beyond the top and bottom edges of my flying geese unit. That is the correct placement. And we're going to sew all four of these and then finger press our seams toward F1, the direction of least resistance. Now we can add our G3 triangles to each edge of the unit. We align the top square corners of the triangle with the block and our bottom tip of our G3 will cross the F1 angled edge at the quarter inch seam line. This is the tip at the top of page three in the pattern. Let's chain piece all four units. Finger pressing our seam toward G3. And then we can add the remaining G3 triangle to the opposite side of the block. Again, allowing the top square corners and having the bottom tip of the triangle Cross the F1 on the quarter inch seam line. Our stitching line will be at the V created by the G3 triangle and the F1 triangle. Chain piece all four and press the seam toward G3. Now we can add our H2 triangles to those angled edges. I like to sew with my flying geese unit on top, so I'm going to match the outer tips and my H2 triangle the tip will extend 3 8 of an inch below the bottom edge of my flying geese section. I'm using my pointed end of my clover hair marker for applique as a stiletto. Chain piece this first triangle on all four units and we finger press our seam toward H2, the direction of least resistance. Now we can add the other triangle to each unit. Again, I like to sew with my flying geese unit on top. So I'm going to align my unit with my H2 triangle so that they cross at the quarter inch seam line and the bottom tips will also match. By sewing with the flying geese section on top, I am able to control or manage those seams, making sure that they don't flip back the wrong way. I chain piece this triangle onto all four units. Using my hair marker as a stiletto, then I finger press my seams towards H2. Now we can put our block together. 
our center block, we put our flying geese, each two units on all four sides, and we add our corner units in each corner, making sure they're correctly aligned. Then we're going to chain piece column two to column one. We have the second piece in row one, adding it to the first unit in row one, making sure our pieces match at top and bottom edges. Then the center block is sewn to the first unit in row two. Keep those seams correctly flipped so that they don't flip back. And now we add the second unit in row three to the first unit in row three. Now we chain piece the third column to the second column. I'll pin them in place to make sure they stay correctly aligned. And I'm sewing the third unit in row one to the second unit in row one. And then the third unit in row two to the second unit in row two. Keeping the patches aligned at top and bottom edges so that my block stays square. And finally, we add the third unit in row three to the second unit in row three. All of the units in our block are now sewn together. Our block is virtually put together. All we need to do is sew the rows together. I'm going to finger press my seams toward those H2 triangles. And now sew row one to row two. Nesting the seams where the corner units meet that center block. Again, you can feel if they're properly nested. I find I don't need to use pins if I can just feel and make sure that those pieces stay nested. And then we also sew the second row to the first row. I'm going to finger press my seams toward H2. And our block is together. And here you have block two. Make sure to head on over to the Northcott Instagram page to enter in their month two block two giveaway. If you haven't already done so, please pop onto my website as well, pattyspatchwork.com, to sign up for the With Glowing Hearts Quilt Along newsletter. In it, I share extra tips and tricks on how you can get your blocks done. I've also set up a Facebook group for the With Glowing Hearts Quilt Along. So if you're on Facebook, please check it out. Thanks for joining and we'll see you back here next month for block three.